Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here at Bish's RV, freezing my face off so we could bring you footage of the brand new 171 FB Ember. Common thing that people said when they were watching our other Ember videos, can't they make one without bunks? And the short answer is yes, absolutely. Half of their floor plans were announced without bunks. Um, this is just the first one of those to really make landfall. And I think it's a winner. Now it's got a couple things uh, that I'm gonna point out that personally I'm not a fan of, but overall, Man, these things are fun. The whole construction of it is different from like anything else you find in the mainstream market. It, there's not a splinter of wood in the structure, basically. The, uh, the walls, the roof, the floor, they are all some form of composite, aluminum, block foam, or combination thereof. The floor is actually the same thing Airstream's using, except it's twice as thick. The suspension on this is no joke. I have personally test towed some members now, and uh, like with a half ton pickup, it tows like a dream. I'm actually seeing a lot of owners now that more of these are out there saying, I've done a little bit of towing. I don't know that I'm gonna put a weight distribution system on it. I don't know that, that uh, like, I'm not gonna recommend you go without one, but a lot of people are saying they haven't felt the need for one because of the good ride balance and handling. And going along with that independent suspension is a chassis unlike anything you've seen in the normal RV marketplace. But a couple other key details on this, factory standard solar and inverter. Um, a, uh, the, the cool Euro style windows that actually have like day night privacy shades. Um, the day shade can act as a bug screen for those who are kind of curious. Uh, above the bed instead of the windshield you have like a skylight that you could look out if you wanted to or you could obviously close it down. And speaking of the bed, this is not one of those weird narrow or short camp queens which I know a lot of people are going to like. Now there's a lot to cover, this is very exciting. Get the popcorn ready, this is gonna be a fun one. Now this floor plan, the general layout here is certainly nothing new in the industry. Um, made, uh, they weren't necessarily the first ones to do it, but in, in this smaller, more premium kind of class, the Rockwood Geo Pro is certainly the one that everyone's kind of covering, or the Flagstaff E-Pro, same thing. The 19 FBS. The J Feather Micro 166 uh, FBS, very, very similar. Actually, that is personally, I think, my very favorite J Feather Micro. I think it just does the, the best job of all the, all the storage and stuff that's in that thing. It's awesome. Um, this one right here, like I said, what it's doing is different materials. A um, couple different, like, key features. The uh, let's, start, let's start right up front here. Let's start with comfort. Like I said, this is not some janky, weird narrow or short bed. Now, when you see a headboard mounted on the left there, it kind of maybe makes you wonder, is it a short bed? That is a 60 by 80 true queen bed. And unlike the Murphy bed embers, it's not a folding bendy bed. So if you want to put a big, thick pillow top or memory foam mattress or whatever you want in there, it is very friendly to that. It's very conducive to that. This is something where you don't necessarily have to sacrifice, do I go camping or do I sleep well? Now, what's also interesting over here, uh, all of the windows and this, I think they call it the stargazer skylight. This thing up here, they're basically those dual pane Euro style windows. Now for anyone wondering, man, what if that flips open going down the road? What if you don't close any of your windows on any RV going down the road? That's obviously a problem. That's why it has all of these different little uh, clamp points, you know, to make sure that you've got a lot of uh, protection there. Plus it has a wind fairing in the front of it on the outside to make sure wind gust doesn't get under the lip of that sucker. Now, something else you might notice, whether it's up top or all of the windows, you have day night shades. So if you like, if you're like me and you like to sleep in, you can straight blot out the sun. Or if you want some light without, uh, uh, while still maintaining some privacy, or if you want to have the window open for airflow and want a bug screen, that is where that one comes into play. But you basically have your choice of how you're gonna do that there. Now, this is still a new manufacturer and I'm still uh, getting a lot of requests from them. Hey, can you ask people about this, that, or the other thing? Like the cabinetry is all pocket screwed. That's great. Some of their uh, storage here, like they went with these kind of like bungee bands to help keep some things in there. What do you think about that? They're lightweight because this is already a heavy camper. Um, I don't know that I love them for, for keeping stuff in place. You know what I mean? Oh, by the way, those lights above the bed and, and frankly, a lot of lights in the RV, they're, they're on a dimmer switch. 
So if you do want to dim those down, you can do that. Um, speaking of down, did you notice that our floor plan in a flash flyby footage, what was down under the bed? Well, we'll get to that. <laughs> First of all, once again, not a bendy bed. 60 by 80 True Queen mattress. I don't think that mattress is terrible, but I've yet to find a mattress that everybody likes. So if you're looking for something a little different, you have the ability to do that here and not have to go to a specialty bedding store. But under the bed, it's a drop down like storage trunk. And the reason that is there is if you choose to go with the Ember Max solar package, that is where a lot of the hardware resides. Now there's also this little kind of shelf right here. Um, this RV that we're looking at was built with the optional roof ladder. It's a detachable ladder here. And a lot of people ask, well, where do we store it? This I think makes an absolutely perfect place for it. And what is that other little leg right there? We'll get to that in just a second. First of all, over here in the headboard, one of the things that I like is it's a little bit of storage, uh, but it's also got some USB outlets in there. So that can make a neat little phone charging or device charging stand. By the way, there are some household outlets right on the face of that over there. They're kind of tucked away in, in the corner, but I mean, they're accessible, they work. Then you see this little guy down here. You might see a couple of these around the camper and you're going, what is that thing? Well, that, my friends, is basically a furnace duct. This has a different type of furnace and water heater, and it's all one thing. It's the Truma Combi unit. It's a combination furnace and water heater. It's more space efficient. It's more uh, propane efficient. It's a very effective, efficient system. It also opens Ember up to some unique temperature testing opportunities that we're gonna talk more about when we get outside. And in case you're wondering, yeah, I obviously have male pattern baldness, as if there's any denying it. And yeah, I am having a bad hair day. Bet you didn't think those two things were po uh, possible at the same time. Did you know in Michigan, you can see lightning and snow at the same time. We call it thunder snow. And it's terrifying. They don't even write about weather like that in the Bible. What is that about? We really seem to be kind of working from the front to the back today, so on to the middle of the camper, the living and kitchen, as it were. Um, again, big, big windows, and those things open for incredible airflow, and being a dual-pane window, they drown out insane amounts of noise. It is, when I'm not talking, it's very quiet and very pleasant here. When I'm talking, obviously less so <laughs> on both fronts. Um, that is just a jackknife sofa. This is not a floor plan that is theater capable because that slide doesn't go all the way down to the floor. You'll see that when we go outside. We are, however, carpetless and ventless. We are easy cleaning. You see that nice little herringbone pattern there. And if I take a seat over here on the, uh, the sofa, you see that you have a nice kind of, you know, right across from the entertainment center uh, seating, especially if you're in the left-hand sofa. But what about when you're laying in bed? Well, due to the fact that that TV can swing out to access basically like um, a closet sort of entertainment center, a plazatainment center, if you will, <laughs> the bed viewing is almost, if not better than, the sofa viewing. So what's behind there? Well, like I said, it's a uh, sort of closet, closetainment center, whatever you want to call it. This RV... Um, they had to get creative with storage. So if you notice, if I get way down here, there's actually like a hanging rod in the top of that. Now it's a big wide open space. So if you wanted to add totes or shelving organizers or something like that, you could. My question to you is, do you prefer it like this where you can sort of build your own adventure or would you rather see it with some sort of built in shelf storage space there? Let me know. A couple handy, we're gonna call these dresser drawers. Now, you see how there's a big blank surface right down here? Um, that's because this RV has like a, a little mini camp kitchenette or a little cooking convenience station on the outside. I know that not everybody's always going to be in love with those things. Um, it is currently standard. We'll talk a little bit more detail about that outside. Up here, you see the hidden hinge cabinetry. And um, as we uh, work our way around... <laughs> They hide these stickers somewhere in every one of their units. And I just, it, watching a guy bonk another dude in the head with a wrench, always, I don't know, it's like, use common sense. Well, yeah, no kidding. <laughs> that always gets me going. 
Um, the uh, big pocket above the fridge is nice. That is a 12 volt DC compressor fridge. I believe it's in the eight cubic foot family, eight point something or whatever, but you get the idea. Big drawer below that too. And it kind of makes me wonder, I think you could maybe pop that drawer out. That could be like a, uh, a, a nice little pet food station. Now there's a couple things, there, well, there's a lot of things on this RV I really like. There are a couple of which I'm not a super fan. So uh, uh, this one does, I, I, interestingly, give us a better kitchen than either of the bunkhouse models I've seen. But as we close up the cabinets, notice that open compartment on the left side of the screen. Well, you notice how it doesn't have a door. Okay, so good news. Those open kitchen cabinet spaces uh, are not supposed to be open. They're supposed to absolutely be a cabinet door over this. I think in the kitchen, it's actually one door. Additionally, in a few minutes here, you're going to see me talk about the exact same thing in the bathroom where they didn't put a door right below the sink. That is not at all how that RV is supposed to be. And I think what actually really speaks the quality of the Ember folks is they didn't try to, to deny it and say, oh, well, maybe we'll fix that on the next one. They said, tell you what, we're going to get a guy with a couple doors. We're going to send him out to your place with a screw gun, and we're going to take care of that because that's not the kind of stuff you should have to deal with. And, I mean, I'm not stoked about the fact that they missed a couple cabinet doors, but I love the fact that they have a buck stops here. We need to fix this. We need to get it done correctly kind of mentality. And I think that really speaks a lot about it. I think you really learn more about a manufacturer when things don't go according to plan versus when they do, you know? With me, there is no golden calf. There is no brand that is above reproach where I don't have, like I have, uh, I'll never say anything bad about them. Like, I love Embers. They're one of my favorite brands. They're so fun and new and exciting. I do think this, respectfully, is a miss, especially a big open compartment like that. By the way, um, up here around the bed, what you might not realize is there's actually like a little corner uh just open space a little pocket you could throw some store or some shoes or something one other note i have for the ember folks if it is at all possible i would love to have like a household outlet right there because the only set of outlets in this kitchen and i'm trying to move slow to not make you sick is right over here which doesn't really make sense when the only functional counter space i have when the sink and the stove are being used is over there so just one little thing if I could if I could change I would because there are not uh, outlets under the overhead cabinets for anyone that is curious. Now it occurs to me you've only seen this kitchen uh, all blown open uh, like crazy. Let me give you uh, a little bit more cohesive look of the RV. Like if you wake up in bed and you look around, this is kind of what you're going to be uh, seeing right here. Now notice the little amber glow amber amber see what they did there marcy <laughs> anyway they've got a little glowing night light right by the door but it's not the disco blue kind of lights you know just it's enough where it'll help you navigate the rv at night without blinding you um a similar conversation to that one cabinet door their pantry over here, awesome that they have one. Again, this has the best storage of any of the embers I've seen so far, which is an area that some of them uh, had been lacking, mostly because of those floor plans, there's just nothing else you could do. I prefer, like, I get that you can't necessarily easily put a door here because maybe this is in the way or something like that. Maybe at least some, some mesh netting on the bottom half, something on the back of the RV that bounces the most to keep that from getting out there. Now, mesh netting is something I could handle myself if I had to. I just... I just don't feel that I, I want to, you know what I mean, for spending this kind of money. If I'm just being fair, it's a small thing. I can deal with it, but that's my two cents. I do love that they're putting the entry shade in the door. That is awesome. A lot of people have said, why aren't they flipping it around the other way so it opens from the bottom up? And the answer is because Ember doesn't install that. They buy the door with the shade already installed from uh, a supplier who only installs them one way. So they would have to pay silly, silly money, meaning you would have to pay silly, silly money to flip that thing when, you know, in about 10 seconds, we could probably flip it here for you uh, if you're so inclined. And speaking of flip it, let's take that, uh, that silver right there, roll it over, flip it, and reverse it. Or as Missy Elliott would say, to get ourselves a little guest hide to bed or a big dog space right here, I don't have hard measurements on that. Unfortunately, manufacturers almost never provide us measurements. But if that is something you need, 
anytime. All you have to do, contact our team. Anyone that has one of the embers in stock, I'll leave you a link in the video description. They'll run out with a tape measure, they'll check it, and they'll demonstrate how they're willing to take the extra effort to earn your business. Unfortunately, I just can't do that on every unit, every video, every sofa, every time. My apologies. And of course, that little leg finally making an appearance, attaching to the sofa face over here, converting itself into a little Dinofa mini desk station. Actually, I could see somebody uh, using that in, in a little kind of mobile office fashion. Probably not the primary use. I'm sure you'd mostly have it just to sit down, have a sandwich, nuke yourself a hot pocket over here, Junior, and sit down and watch the Maury Povit show with old Grandpa. I don't know... My grandpa never watched Maury Povich. I don't even know where all that came from. Anyway, moving on. Um, interesting note, the bathroom door actually has a little magnet catch on it. But the reason is so it doesn't smash into the stainless door of the refrigerator. And I love that as a new manufacturer, they thought it. But then again, that's the thing with Ember. They're a new manufacturer. They're an experienced team. This ain't their first time building campers. You don't build something like this your first try. Like, the little details, like the door catch, the uh, the, the the lock on the door, um, a place for toilet paper that won't hit you in the knees when you close the door. And speaking of that, uh, giving you a little look around the toilet. I'm not going to lie. It's not a big bathroom. That toilet space is a little tight. You might get a little bit extra left elbow room if you open that shower door like I've done. The right side is close. And as much as I love this, it kind of goes back to the same thing I've been talking about. This wide open door under the sink. I don't normally use phrases this strong. I hate that. I, I really don't like that. That, to me, looks and feels very unfinished. I would rather have anything there other than just an open thing so what i'm hoping is when this video goes live one of the people from ember that watches this gives me a call and says hey good news josh all that happened there is we just forgot to put a door on and we're sending one to you i'm hoping that's what happens i don't know that's what's going to happen anyway you see the headroom here in the shower the rear wall of this is six and a half foot tall um what's interesting is I'm going to back you up slowly here. If you look, the ceiling actually slowly gets taller until right in front of the slide out. And it becomes more obvious when it suddenly tapers down above the bed. Um, it's six and a half foot tall in the, sh in, in, in the bathroom shower area. The skylight makes it so that at least somebody like me can stand in the shower. But the rest of the RV in the living space actually feels more open and expansive. And the road mode function on this with the slide closed is fantastic. This is one of those models, I don't know that it even needs a slide. The slide just really opens it up and gives you uh, a lot of breathing space. So, I mean, obviously, you know, the uh, the refrigerator right by the door, right behind us, that's, that's a no-brainer. You can get to the bed, you can use the bed, you can get to your closet. Um, and, uh, of course, we can get to the bathroom, which... I still don't like that big open cavity. It feels unfinished to me, but I, I think I've beaten that horse uh, to death enough and continue to beat it there. We'll move ourselves on. But if you appreciate the extra time and effort to look at these things with the slide closed road mode, make sure you hit the like button on our video, subscribe, and let's hop outside and see what else she has to offer. By the way, sliding that table just between the mattress and the wall, perfect place to transport it. It just does not have the opportunity to to slide around, to build up enough kinetic energy to bang and and bash into anything. A little pro tip for you from your Uncle Josh. Man, there, there's a lot to cover here. I never know where to begin with these. I just, I'm just going to start going. We're going to start up front. We're going to start working our way around. How about the fact that they have skipped over the traditional tongue jack route? And basically what you're looking at here is a uh, uh, a power jack, a power like stabilizer leg that they just put on the front of the RV. But it works, you can level the RV front to back, it's very cool, and it opened the tongue up to do some very different things. First of all, let's talk about the Versa coupler. This is an RV that maybe some people wanna take a little bit more uh, off trails, off the standard road and campsite you know, pattern. That up there is called the Versa hitch. Um, you see how it has different mounting points up and down? So it's yet another way that this can marry up with different vehicles, some of which that ride high or low, 
or you could swap that out for one of those uh, rock and roll hitches, or what, what are they called? Lock and roll hitches, that's what it's called. Rock and roll are actually two different uh, Ember floor plans. Now, up front here, we've got the gearbox. It is, uh, so any of the metal that we're looking outside, uh, at, si at outside, there we go. Two trailer park girls go around the outside. Anyway, that is all a powder coated aluminum. Uh, and that's what's interesting about these. You see a lot of stuff on this. You hear a lot of words like Asdel because the walls inside and outside are Asdel. Um, the floor is all composite. It's, it's a composite core, not a block foam floor. Um, it is incredibly strong. It has greater screw retention than plywood by comparison. You hear these words and it sounds ultralight. I, I, wanna, I, I wanna get this out there. This is not a lightweight little trailer. It is a beefy little tank. It is generational. This is something you could hand down to your kids when you're done with it uh, with, with without having to get too awful involved. Because like under all the corner seams, they're not using a common butyl tape. Uh, they're basically using like a uh, like a slide seam tape, like a turnabond style tape. Uh, it's just one more protection method that they have on these. A little laser etching, like they've got the word ember all over this thing because of course they do, that's their company, that's what you do. But the thing is, if you look at those wings, they stick up a little bit. The idea there, I think was just to do something that looked very cool, they do it off the back too. But one of the things I kind of thought about on the front, that could help deflect some branches, some trees, some things like that. One of the, uh, sometimes uh, an RV's greatest asset is also its greatest liability. In this case, having that big storage trunk under the bed, which is designed to potentially house a uh, 3000 watt master volt converter charger combo and potentially up to four battle borns under that bed. It does mean that you, you know, it really sticks into the pasture. I really wish, tell me this, this would, uh, if you'd like to see Amber do this, that big blank panel we're looking at, if they would offer a side access door right there for ma models without Max Solar, don't you think that'd be really cool? And by the way, the little drawbridge style table door that they have here, if you don't like that, just unclip it. It can flip and fold all the way down, so no big deal there. On the outside here, you have this little mini camp kitchenette. I know a lot of people are going to ask, can I get it without that and get more storage inside? From the factory by default at this time, no. Right now, that configuration is standard. The griddle is actually optional, so you could get it without the griddle, but the fridge and the, uh, the construction boxing in of that is currently standard. If that answers a question you were going to ask, at least hit the like button on our video. And if you dislike that answer, voice your opinion in the comments, and who knows, Ember's been doing some great listening. We got our propane cooker hooker down below here. Um, we also have factory standard Goodyear Wrangler tires right here, basically like a truck tire. But this is one of the major things that actually shapes the embers. The, uh, the, the true trailing arm independent suspension system that you have on these. Um, I've seen test videos that I am not allowed to release currently. I'm working on that. But there is absolutely no comparison, especially compared to leaf spring, but even versus a torsion suspension system, that is hands down the best shock absorbing, the best handling, the best traveling suspension you are ever going to find in this RV segment. It's just absolutely beyond comparison. Um, and as soon as I can release footage that actually justifies what I just said, I will do so. Right now, unfortunately, I cannot. I love the look of these. little. Uh, I like the little uh, parallelogram kind of eye shadow around the windows. Not everyone's a fan of it, to each their own, no sweat. Uh, I suppose in theory they are basically just decals around the windows. You could heat gun those off if that's really not your preference. The little wing out on the, uh, the the back here, doesn't that kind of remind you of like the older classic cars? They had a lot of shape and a lot of character before things became like boxy, mass-produced 80s cars. <laughs> um, once again, no wood in this structure, whether it's the rear wall, the front wall, or the, the roof, everything is Asdell aluminum block foam. And then again, the floor has a heavy-duty composite uh, core material in it that is also acting as a major thermal barrier. Something they did here, 
they put the spare tire up high. Now, if you're a little more gravity friendly like my wife, I get that that could not be fun to wrestle off there. But the reason they did it is because they also actually included a two inch receiver hitch on the back with a 300 pound tongue rating. The idea for that being, if you wanted to add a bike rack or a small generator tray or something, the spare tire is not interfering with that. Now, one thing I haven't mentioned so far, now that I'm looking directly at this thing, is its uh, the body width. This is a uh, 90 inch wide camper. In English, that means eight, uh, nope, sorry, seven and a half foot wide. So it is narrow body, um, but it's an interesting thing uh, that they're not the first to do it, certainly, but like I've seen Salem Wildwood FSX series be very successful with that. And I'm seeing more and more brands jump into that, like J Feather Micro is another good example of a seven and a half foot wide body. Now we're going to come back to something in just a minute here. You see those brackets up by the top of the RV, both on the rear wall, as well as just behind the slide out. Those are actually ladder mount points. The ladder on this is optional, but I'm going to show you what it looks like here. Always, always double check with our team members to make sure that we have the uh, ember in stock with the equipment you are seeking. Now the RV is not level. The tongue is actually up high, which means the tail's a little low, yet there's still fantastic clearance. Uh, below, say, the, uh, the sewer lines, the, uh, the stabilizer jacks there in the corner. Um, this is also something I think is very, very cool. Uh, and no, I'm sorry, I don't have a part number for this. I get questions every time. Um, Ember, directly through their customer service, might be able to assist you with this. But basically, this RV has its own built-in wheel chock because it is very difficult to stabilize a single axle camper. So they built it in so you don't have to worry about it. Um, you know, you can get it kind of as tight or as loose as you want. But one of the other things is where that little pin sticks in place to keep it locked in place, you could lock this thing. You could basically boot your camper for security purposes. So if you don't have the ability to park this on your property or you don't want somebody rolling off with your expensive little trailer, because um, let's be frank, this is not even close to the least expensive little trailer you're ever going to find. I don't mind calling a spade a spade and a duck a duck for no bigger than these are. They are spendy for sure. Well, you know, um, you don't want people running off with it. Like I drive a 2013 Kia Soul that isn't fancy or flashy by any means. And like if I leave my car at the airport, I don't even bother locking it. Cause, cause frankly, somebody would do more damage to that car than it's worth if they tried to break into it. And if they need, uh, you know, uh, my, my half consumed diet Mountain Dew in the console more than me, they're welcome to it. Please don't break my window. <laughs> Sorry, I said squirrel. Um, down here we've got our built in sewer hose caddy. So you don't gotta, you know, put your muck stuff in with your camp stuff. The underbelly also all enclosed. These have uh, 12 volt tank heaters on all the tanks standard. Also here is a very interesting thing I recently discovered. Someone's gonna ask, are they four seasons? And to that I say, I don't know yet. What I do know is Ember is doing the testing. What I discovered is uh, historically, a lot of manufacturers took their RVs to Dometic where they have a heat testing chamber. What I discovered is that in 2019, they shut that facility down and it hasn't reopened since. And I discovered that Truma, the maker of their combination water heater furnace, has their own temperature testing chamber that is only available to manufacturers who use Truma products in their RVs. So in the last three years, any manufacturer who suddenly decided we are four seasons rated probably didn't actually test it. What I know is that Ember is actively testing their RV at the time of this recording. If I get an update, I will relay that in a future video, or if you're curious, if you don't want to scan through the comments, leave me another comment. By the way, I don't mind answering the same question 43 times. Don't feel like you have to scroll through all the comments and, and to try to find an answer. I'll answer it 16 times, I don't care. 43, 37, whatever the number may be. <laughs> um, so I don't know if they're four seasons or zero degree tested yet, I know they're working on it. I know that you have that insane thermal barrier, extra thick composite floor. I know that you have the enclosed underbelly. I know that they have, uh, you know, their, their tank heaters. I would be surprised if they don't end up passing that testing, but I can't guarantee it at this time. And I won't make something up 
just to try to sell a camper real quick. You will always get straight facts from me here. But folks, we are still not done here. Um, the uh, other side of the gearbox, by the way, is just empty from the factory. It's there if you want to load a whole bunch of batteries or other cargo, wheel chocks, whatever, into it. And uh, it is structural, meaning you can walk on it if you want to. So, like, if you need to brush something off the front of your RV, you could legit stand on that. Or maybe you could add an extra cargo box. I'm going to give you a little caution about doing that, though. If you look at the specs of the RV, remember I said these are not ultralights. They are tanks. They have a heavy hitch weight. A lot of times when you see a single axle camper, you start thinking things like SUV towing, mid-size pickup towing. And there are going to be some SUVs that maybe handle this, but because of the hitch weight, this actually is almost like a half ton towable trailer. I um, hope you appreciate the fact that, like when I say that, we probably just disqualified ourselves from selling this camper to a lot of people. But again, I'm not going to put you in an unsafe situation just to make a quick buck. Nautilus style docking center, just like a big fifth wheel. Um, and again, they're already listening. This is why I always ask for this feedback. Remember, they kept putting the tank heater switch inside a kitchen cabinet where your mac and cheese box might flip it. They're listening, they're moving it. I don't, I don't wanna seem ungrateful. I would prefer this to still be up by the uh, tank center. But here's the thing. You can flip it and forget it. You don't have to see that switch running all the time because they're thermostatic tank heaters. Until the temperature drops to 40 degrees, they don't even bother kicking on, so they're not going to sit there and melt your holding tanks. Uh, garden hose sprayer style and factory uh, included tire pressure monitoring system. A little tire link clicks right into there. So when you get the LCI One Control free app on your phone, uh, the, the TPMS integrates into that. And what's cool, and I've played with this, I, I liked it actually, um, it can provide you in motion, like live updates. It will like blip your phone basically, give you a little notification. That's the word I'm looking for, holy cow. Um, <laughs> that was my bur smoke coming out of my ears after that one. It will tell you like, hey, we have, uh, you know, there's a tire heat situation going on. Um, Cause it, it doesn't just monitor uh, tire pressure. It also monitors the heat of the tire, which is a concern. Um, it will, you know, tell you, oops, the uh, tire's deflating currently, something like that. Now, remember, I said there's an optional, removable, detachable ladder that's included with these things with dual mounting points. Uh, so, depending on where the RV is parked or what's around you, you know, it gives you more opportunities to get up there. Not to mention, that ladder being free-floating, you could move it around and use it for other things other than just the RV. Um, that... Uh, this ladder and mounting system is about to start becoming very popular in the RV industry. The traditional rear wall ladder that has been used for many years and continues to be used by a lot of brands as I trip and almost fall through a snowbank over here to get you this uh, angle with that big ladder extended. Um, traditional ladders are gonna continue to roll out, but due to some supply challenges, a lot of manufacturers have looked for alternative solutions and you're going to start seeing a lot of more premium brands, I think, jump over to something like this. Now, that being said, it is currently icy on the roof. I tried to get up there. Uh, I became Nancy Kerrigan ice skater very quickly and thankfully I did not do a triple sow cow double axle with a half twist shaky McFlippy off the side there. Um, I, I stayed safe, but I decided very quickly to get off the roof. So uh, I got you some scan footage of the roof so you can see that 190 watt solar panel. If you'd like to learn more about the max solar package available on these, check the link in the video description where we have a detailed video basically giving you a big overview of what that is, what it can do for you, and what it is not, which I think is maybe even more important. So like I said, I'll leave you some links in the video description to maybe the other embers or uh, like the uh, the ember solar package video if you want to learn more about their max solar package and the work they're doing with Battleborn batteries and all kinds of things. Um, and if you like what you see, hit that like button on the video. Make sure you subscribe because we have more of these coming. If this isn't exactly the floor plan you're looking for, it's on the way. And for those who are curious, I can't officially say, so I'm not saying, I'm just saying, they are working on quad wheel variants of this. I'd call it tandem axle, but what if it was a four wheel truly independent suspension system? It's coming, it's coming. We're gonna do our best to make sure you see it first right here at Bish's RV. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and make sure you check that link in the video description if you'd like to see where one of these is parked and what we're asking at any time. And the sun came out.
Oh, that is pleasant. Thank you. 